So let me catch people up to speed very, very quickly. Essentially, Aaron was pushed out of the Aftermath Foundation and Mark, Mike, and Claire alluded to certain incidents that forced their hand to get rid of Aaron. Aaron promised that not much happened, but he will speak on L.A. in due time. He has finally spoken about it with someone, and I will just do a short summation of those events. We'll hear a little bit from Aaron, and I will react. Essentially, what happened is Aaron had a relationship with a woman we're going to call her jay and he had this relationship with jay in la for a few times and when he was doing anti-scientology work which was legitimate they were in a hotel together and apparently for whatever reason this woman has some mental issues and would not stop talking on may 18th when he had to sort of see some people about anti-scientology work essentially the situation spiraled out of control she started screaming and attacking him and apparently that led to an injury on his foot and he was bleeding. And so they had a big back and forth. They left the hotel. He went to a CVS to try to... She kept insisting continuing the relationship when he was clear that it's over. I just need to get away from you. I need to... And they went back and forth, back and forth. Apparently some of this was taped and it looks bad. It looks like they're having this fight. That's not what's happening. He's just trying to get away from her. So basically... Aaron is married and he has children, but his marriage is in a weird murky state and he just had this consensual relationship outside the marriage. And apparently that is the juicy kind of emotional blackmail that Mark, Mike and Claire have that he's been doing some quote, questionable things behind the scenes. Now, apparently Aaron did quickly notify people who he thought he could trust about the situation, broke it down saying it's nothing like big, this is just what happened situation in my personal life that went out of control and at the time mike mark and claire really didn't care they didn't really react at all and here aaron is going to give some details on their reactions is you mark and claire and mike are not a victim of you being assaulted by a crazy girl in la they're not victimized in this situation the aftermath foundation is not victimized in this situation right you were victimized and then essentially blackmailed and the people who were supposed to be your friends made you out to be the bad guy in this situation. Now, someone might go, hey, look, this is just really careless behavior for someone on the board of a nonprofit foundation. Guys, uh, you can have, someone can You're have your opinion about that, but it's like the foundation is just a vehicle to raise money and spend money. It's not an entity that exists. So, at least in his mind, it seemed they were indifferent to what was happening, but apparently they were going to save this in their minds to use against him. There is one further refinement to the story, namely that they're invoking the bylaws of the aftermath to get rid of him. And here I will disagree a little bit with Aaron that the bylaws were not set up that way. They were a little bit arbitrary. So when Luis and him made up the aftermath foundation, the bylaws were sort of a little bit arbitrary. For instance, Aaron says he has no issue with married couples being on the board of directors. I would disagree. I think uh, married couples on the board is a prop. But in any case, the bylaws were not set up to sort of have these gotcha moments where you can use them to invoke to get rid of people. A lot of it was boilerplate language that was just there functionally to get the foundation going. The main task of the foundation is to help people get out of Scientology. That's what it's there for. And that's what he focused on. But unfortunately, it seemed that Mark, Mike, and Claire turned this into a kind of power struggle and personality issue. And Mike Render made an ultimatum that he had to leave or he would leave the foundation. Leave this. And so I had nothing to worry about. Um, it turns out Claire Headley believed it. <laughs> and um, to be honest, the other board members said, we don't even care if we believe this. It was actually Mike Rinder who said, I don't actually care if Aaron did this or not. Aaron makes horrible, careless decisions. And if he didn't do this, he'll do something in, uh, else in the future. And it'll be much worse. And he's going to take us all down with him. And I don't want to be associated with him. So that is the situation in a nutshell. There was sort of, um, I just want to say, erotic scandal that Aaron wanted to keep quiet. It was a consensual relationship, but it went out of control. That is all there is to it. There was nothing else beyond that. It was just a consensual relationship that went horribly wrong, and he wanted to keep quiet, and that is it. Nothing more, nothing less. That is what happened in L.A., but they took advantage of him and forced him off the board, setting some pretty ridiculous pretexts to get rid of him.